We are now in the very centre point of Queensland. So we found some cool sculptures. Exactly two hundred dollars. So I see you're in cattle class, eh? I should have married a richer man. Are you in cattle? Do you reckon there'd be food in the galley? Because I'm hungry. <laughs> smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> Just left whatever campground that was. It's Amarack. Well, they've got the cattle yards, sale yards, right? Oh, then someone decided to sleep with the windows open last night, the first time. <laughs> Anywho. This morning we're heading to Mataburra. Mataburra, Mataburra. For some amount of time, we don't know yet. We and don't know, we may go to Longreach today, we don't know yet. So just when we thought all the sculptures were done and dusted. Well, here you go, a bit of information. The sculpture trail that we did yesterday, what goes around, I think there are about 35 sculptures, but there are actually 40 in the area. Oh. So here we go, one. we found another one. Look at him. So do you reckon he's a big red kangaroo? Definitely he's a big red kangaroo. He's got nuts for nuts. Let's have a look at his nuts. Look, his nuts. And his buns? Are nuts. Cool, isn't it? Made it to Mataburra. We did! And we are at the Mataburra Saurosaurus. Mataburra Saurus Interpretation Centre. Now there's quite a few sculptures to see here in Mataburra, but we're kind of sculptured out. So we're going to take you through a few places. The Interpretation Centre, um, we're going to go have a look at the big chair and the centre, geographical centre of Queensland yep. monument. There's a few other things, but we're not going to give you the full rundown. And of we're not going sculptures. to any more bloody museums too. I'm museumed out for the next five years Well, there's years a memorial with, hall right next door, so we'll see how he feels. No, about. we're not. No, we're not. <laughs> no, we're not. All right, let's just have a look in the interpretation. <laughs> okay, let's have a look. What sort of information do you have for us, Ranger Stacey? I've learned a few things since being in here, actually. I thought this was really interesting, that until recently, there'd been nothing you found since 1963, but as recently as 2020, um, things are starting to come to the surface now. I guess that's because of more technology enabling these guys to uncover it, and the ground is simply eroding and things are coming to the surface. That's what this is all about. And then over here is the ancient environment, which is always fascinating. Here's the map of... Where they've been found. Where they've been found. Look at that. It's insane. So is it only Queensland, really? Oh, in the NT a little bit, but not really. It says here that the Mataburrasaurus died on land. Its bloated carcass would have floated out to sea on a tide or in a storm surge. After it sunk to the sea floor, it was quickly buried by sand and mud. Over time, the skeleton was buried even deeper. The sand and mud turned to rock. Bones turned to fossil. The bones of mud were buried 600 metres or more below the surface. Yeah, Today, well. the inland sea has long since disappeared. Well, there's the mutt right there. Um, there he Look. is. Yeah. He's big. Mm. Hello. This here is Doug Landon. Well, it's not actually him, but you know what I mean. And he is the guy that discovered the big dinosaur, the monster, I guess, in the ground. This is where um, Mataburrasaurus was actually found in a cattle holding yard on the banks of the Thompson. 
you can see the camera he used to take these photos and what I think is really cool in the photo you can see these big round boulders and if you swing over here here's a round boulder that we don't know how became round <laughs> and there are round boulders in that photo too but yeah do you know how these boulders become round because they clearly don't there's a question right there asking that is our first stop here in Mataburra the interpretation center really worth spending some time and reading all the information here because it's quite informative First ever building in Mataburra. That's that old photo up there. Yeah. The very first building. How cool is that? Awesome. What am I going to eat first? What are you going to eat first? A quiche. now in the very centre point of Queensland, or very close to. Now I'm going to pass you on to my assistant, she's going to give you all the information that you need for this part of the, right. part of the journey. Okay, so Mataburra is the town that is located the closest to the geographic centre of Queensland. Closest? The closest. Ripped. The closest town to the geographic centre. So they have erected a brand new monument, which you can see you right here. Okay, so this sign took a little bit of me trying to figure it out before I can tell you what it's Oh, it's, it's all easy. About. <laughs> so the, the monument here, um, you've got Wiggly Lines, which is the water channels or the meeting of the waters. Then you've got the rays, the midday sun, blades of windmill from the water from underground. Um, all the X's over here, the corner of fence paddock, I guess because it looks like barbed wire. And then cakes, plates on a table is outback hospitality, also forms the queue. Um, or the tail of the queue for Queensland. So that's kind of what designers really get. Um, they really get into it, don't <laughs> they? Very clever, yeah. Clever and or just a bit far out? Like. Yes. Find yourself in the centre of Queensland. Sigh. <sighs> a simple sense of rightness, peace, and joy when tension dissolves and you find yourself finally at the centre. Centre where the complex streams of your past and present meeting of waters meet in synergy to empower your future wow. and belong. Community, culture, challenge, and destiny celebrate your uniqueness, potential, and place of connectedness. It sounds exactly All what I hear. Right here. And this along here, you'll see along there, are pipes. And they've been cut to the same height as the annual rainfall. So you'll see the year on the top of each pipe. So these are the pipes here. You can see, we'll go with this one because he's kind of high up there. 1891 had 938 millimetres of rainfall and then followed by, look at that, 92, which had only 363. 93 was a bad year, 237. And then it goes on. And we get to this year, which I don't even know what it is because I can't see. 1950 with 1,357 millimetres of rain. Wow. <laughs> and that is by far the highest. <laughs> this one here looks to be one of the lowest. 2002, 124 millimetres. This one we had the big rain. droughts, wasn't it? Yeah. So, well, what's obviously. that? 2001, 2002, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. All still quite low. Then 2009, 2010 was a good year. And then it's higgledy piggledy again. <laughs> until the end where it's all still really low. So this is 2020 last year, 347 mil of rain. And look, it's all gonna go all the way to 2030. <laughs> oh yeah, look, 2030. We'll get back to you on that one, eh? Long reach. Long reach. It's a long reach, but we'll get there. <laughs> there are cool things everywhere. We keep pulling over to check them out.
two hundred dollars. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Thirsty. <laughs> Whose idea was it to buy a car with an engine this big? Uh. Huh? Uh. You. Yeah. Well. It was you. Oh me. Off you go. You want to pay for this one? Go, go pay the price for your decisions. <laughs> It's in good old Longreach. We're at Tyre Power, and um, I've been noticing this tyre has been going down like heaps over the last week. And come and look at the culprit right here. I'm going to show you. Look at this little culprit. Where is he? Right there. So the boys here are going to get that thing out. Lucky it's in a good spot. It's in between the big treads, so they can just pull that out and put a cap in there and um, yeah. Fix it all up, and then I'll get all the valves replaced too, because the valves seem to be sticking, and I'm hoping I'll probably dust them or something. I don't know. But anyway. Tire maintenance, so I'm gonna take you guys on you a go, wander. Yeah, you go into town while I get this stuff sorted. So. First thing I'm gonna do is leave the industrial area. across Keg Kelly and he tells me he's the bird man. Yeah. Tell me uh, about your birds. Well, I've been here nearly since I was three year old and um, I've been, I used to have horses but we don't have horses now, now we've got birds and that. How but many birds have you got? About 250 of them. 250? Yeah, and all that. And you said we they put, were just in the show? Yeah, they were in the Longry show. And how did you go? Uh, we went okay. We done done a fairly good one. Did you place? Yeah, done place and got a couple of winners. Oh, well done. Place. Yeah. Mm. I'm Kate Kelly again now. <laughs> and, Hello uh, again. You're going to tell uh, me about this building here? Yeah, this building here, this is the back part of the commercial hotel that used to be here in a, long, a long time ago. What happened? Uh, it got burned down and all that. Do you know when it got burnt down? No, I couldn't tell you that. This is my Mrs. E what? now. What? Hello, how are you doing? He's giving me a rundown on this building here, telling me it got burnt down and... Mm. Yeah, he tells me... I you... don't even know where the park is that the bloke that saved everybody. He's supposed to be a park here, but I don't think... I think the other bloke took it. Who owned it? Oh. Ah. I'm telling her about our birds. Yeah, mm. tell me all about your birds. Well, thanks for the chat this morning. Enjoy the rest of your day, you two. Yeah, okay. See you later. See you, bye. Yep. So as I was about to call Chris, he called me and he's asked me to grab him a toasty, which is fine. So I'm going to head back through town and grab him a toasty. And then we're going to see um, what's the go with Qantas, the museum. And uh, we'll take it from there. There you go. Did I, oh, did I do good? You did do good. <laughs> and the boys at Thai Power did a sensational job. They took the screw out and now we're good to go. And they charged me $34. Oh, wow. To take that monstrosity of a ripped tyre and wheel off, rip the tyre off, take the screw out, patch it, and then put it back on and make sure everything was right. $34. Anyway, how good does this toasty look? <laughs> it looks really good, actually. All right, let's eat. Decided to try our luck at Stockman's Hall of Fame. It says he's supposed to book the day before and to allow four hours and we have a conscious tour booked at one and it's 10 o'clock so that gives us like two and a half hours anyway we'll see how we go <laughs> given us a rundown on the tour. So what's going to happen, we're going to go into these different, what are they called, museums? Museums for the exhibits museums. in the museum. Yeah, and the sounds are going to come through here and the pictures are going to come through here. So there's not going to be much for you 
for you to see. Uh -huh. so we'll, we'll show you a few snippets, but I guess our advice would be to come and check it out. Qantas Museum. Yeah. We're doing touristy things. We are doing touristy things today. Yeah. First thing first, drink of water. And then you're going to the gym this afternoon. I am tonight. The Long Reach Gym. I am. I am. I'm very excited. I did a little bit of research and I found a boxing class which I was going to attend but my shoulder's not feeling too good so I'm doing Pilates tonight at 5.30 while he drinks beers around the campfire no doubt. So I see you're in cattle class, eh? I should have married a richer man. Are you in cattle? <laughs> I need a first class man. <laughs> I'm going over here. Later, peasant. Look at the size of it. It's huge. It actually says here, it is um, a four and a half ton British monster. Oh. There you go. Well, good old Rolls Royce. Look at it. You can see in the front end. Come over here, babe. Stand there. Well, there you go. <laughs> babe, yeah. I've got a bit of a lifter noise. Can you just have a look up in here and see if you can fix it? Uh, yeah. A little bit of a noise in the front end. <laughs> Spinning propellers generate large stress. Different kinds of wood use. In December 1934, disaster struck for Qantas, but if you read the fine print here, it says it had not yet become a Qantas aircraft. Apparently the work had been done too quickly and it had many flaws, including a fatal flaw in the tail fin, and it crashed. And where did it crash? Um, it says near Ilford home, Farsdale. So I don't think- Which is not near Tambo. Three hours drive yeah. from Tambo. So whether it's, I don't know. So there's some of the wreckage of it anyway. How you going there, boys? Hmm, not talking, eh? We have 10 minutes to go until our tour begins. Stories high, right there. Yeah, there's only two stories high. And $500,000 to fill the fuel tanks. Mm.
Chris's favourite plane. Wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. You loved it. Because it had so much reading and memorabilia. He was like, imagine putting the stickers and the signs Boring. on upside down. I'm just looking at the mechanical side of it. So. The mechanical and the sign writing side. Hungry. The last plane. Hungry. Fourth and the last one. Do you reckon there'd be food in the galley? Because I'm hungry. I don't think so. That just sucker there. Been inside that plane, which is incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah. It smells of rich mahogany. <laughs> it does. It was made to be like a yacht with wings in it. So yeah. taken a everything out and made it out of what wood and gold. Yeah, all wood, timbers, gold, just Michael absolutely Jackson beautiful. Is in there. Sony Jonathan TVs, is. Mitsubishi TVs, coffee percolated, like from the eighties, so it's yeah. luxury from like nineteen eighty one. So yeah. it's a little bit different to today's luxury, but it is so cool in there. Yeah. It was too dark to take this camera through, but we took a few shots with um, the phone, so hopefully you can see a bit of an idea of what's inside. Yeah. This is right to Winton, obviously the first place to come is the park. The, the crack up sisters. Oh <laughs> mate, I'm the opal hunters, mate. <laughs> Would you like to come inside and have a look, mate? <laughs> Probably one of the coolest things I've ever seen. It's dinosaur posted. 40 meters of footprints that they've just relocated. And another must when you're at an outback pub is. I mean, I. I'll show you. <laughs> Let's go have some beers for my birthday. Birthday beers. Done. Yeah, I'm put sure it in. I mean. How long are you going to put it in for? Let's see what your cooking skills are like. Mm. Oh. <laughs>